The snack that you're going to build today is called Ames Chair. It's all in how you look at it. You're going to make what will turn out to look to you like a chair, but it definitely won't look that way in the beginning. For this snack, you'll need a shoebox, a two liter plastic soda bottle, straight sided and colorless, a stapler, masking tape, a white five by eight index card with at least one plain side without ruled lines, a pen, a ruler, scissors, two brass fasteners, a large rubber eraser, a push pin, a sewing needle with diameter no larger than the diameter of the push pin, a length of thin monofilament fishing line, four pound test works well, two paper clips, a three by five index card, a one hole paper punch, three chenille stems, 12 inches long, in a bold color that will contrast with a white background, needle nose pliers, a utility knife or other small sharp knife used for crafts and paper cutting. This snack involves a fair amount of detailed work. And uh, if you think that uh, maybe being a watchmaker would be something you would hate, uh, this might be something for you to reconsider, or you can take it as a challenge and do something that I think will end up being very worthwhile. I'm gonna cut the top part off. And then I'm going to do the same thing with that bottom. Take this and cut it straight up like that. And I'm just going to draw a three inch square on here. And I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to cut out that square. I'm going to draw a two inch square on the end of the box. And I'm going to center this as closely as I can. And now I'm going to cut that square out. And I'm going to take the piece of plastic and I'm going to staple it. I've got here a 5 by 8 card and I want to cut this down to the size that will just be the end of the box here. And I'm just going to staple that on there like that. We're going to put these two brass fasteners on the box. One will go about 2 inches down and 2 inches in. And I'm going to make a little slit. I'm going to then take the brass fastener, stick it through there, and bend the ends. Let's do the other side now. The next step will be for you to go to our website, uh, to this snack, and print the two figures that you see here. And I'm going to tape one right over this plastic window. And then I'm going to take the larger one and I'm going to center it as best I can. Take a push pin and at each little lettered point on each chair, I'm going to poke a hole through the plastic window on this end. And then I'm going to come down to the other end and poke a hole through the cardboard on that end. Now we're going to uh, remove these two little drawings, but keep them close by. We'll need them for references. We're going to tie this paper clip onto the end of the fishing line. And now I'm going to peel off about 15 feet of this line, and I'll cut it. Now I'm going to take the line and I've got about four inches between the paper clip and the brass fastener and I'm going to wrap this around several times. That will hold it for us. Now I'm going to thread the fishing line and uh, tie a knot. The next step is to take the needle and use it to thread uh, the line through the box. Uh, through first through a hole in the back of this end of the box and then through a hole in the other end here where the plastic window is. Uh, that's why we need the pictures. So here's the picture right here and I want to set it for capital through hole capital A. So that's right down here on the picture that's at the bottom of this leg of the chair and that's right there in the box. So I'm going to go poke the needle through there you can see it coming through now. So there it comes. So now I'm through that. 
Then I'm going to go through hole small a. Uh, and here's small a on this drawing. And there it is on there, on the window. So I will poke it through there. Now before I pull the rest of that line through, I'm going to stick the needle in the eraser here. Uh, and what that will do is keep the needle from getting lost or getting tangled with all of these lines here. So now, once I've got the needle safely poked there, I'm going to use both hands. I can devote my full attention to this to pull the line, all 15 feet of it, through the holes here. And now you see it's tight on the back, so it comes from the brass fastener around the back, through that hole, out the front, and now I'm ready to go on to the next thread. Now I'm going to finish off the threading. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to put it in through small b. Then I'm going to put it through capital B. And I'm going to take my needle and this time I'm going to go through whole capital C to whole small c and then small d to capital D, and so on until the end, when I will actually come out whole j at the back here. I'm going to tighten these up, make sure all lines are tight in there. I will bring it around the side of the box, and I'll take it about six inches past the brass fastener, and I'm going to cut it off there. I'm going to tie the remaining paper clip on the end of the line and just wrap it around there as many times as you can. All right, now we're going to take chenille stems. Two of them I'm going to cut into three inch pieces. So there's our eight three inch pieces, and then we want six two inch pieces. Uh, now we're going to bend about a quarter of an inch up on each end of one of these things. So there's a little uh, tab on the end. And you can do this uh, either by hand or with the pliers. Sometimes it's easier with the pliers. Sometimes some people find it easier just to do like that. So we're going to do each one of these to make sure it has two ends bent up just like that. All right, now we're going to attach the chenille stems to the lines in the box. We need 11 total. You can use any 11 you want. And it doesn't matter whether you use a long one or a short one. The first one needs to be attached between line capital C to whole small c and line BB, the one that runs between capital B and small b. So I am going to try to locate those strings, and then I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to put it on there. So I'll get in here, and I'll say, OK, there is string C. I want to do this in the back half, or this half, of the box. I don't want them up close to where I'm going to be looking in the window here. So I'll go here, and I'll put this in, and I will bend the little tab around the line. You can see this again is detailed work, but I do have it on the right line now. And I'll take the pliers, the needle nose pliers, and maybe that will make this a little easier. Uh, I now have to find line B, and there it is. So I will take it and I'll lay the thing on there and fold it over. And then there is a whole list of ones to do, and we have to do them one at a time until we've got all 11 of them in place. When you get all finished with the tedious task of fastening all of these to a line, uh, 
you should end up with something like this. It's a kind of a random array of uh, chenille stems in there. Uh, the one you get will not look just like this one. If I did it again, it would not like, look exactly like this one. Take three by five card, and we want to punch a hole uh, right in the middle of it. So then I want to center this hole over what we would call the back of the chair. And then I'm going to staple it on. And then we want to bend the card up like this so it forms a viewing window. Okay, now that we've finished uh, the construction phase, the assembly, uh, if you look in the top of the box at what was done attaching all these stems to the, the lines, it looks pretty random. There's not much pattern there. But now take one eye and shut it and look through the hole, and it's a chair. Now that we've finished the construction part of the box and you have actually looked in the top and looked uh, through the hole with one eye shut, uh, what's going on? How does this random affair, uh, array turn into a chair? Uh, close one eye and look at uh, this piece of uh, chenille stem that I have in my hand. Uh, whether I hold it like this or like this, remember one eye shut, no binocular vision, uh, then it looks like a straight line. So if long as if this is connecting uh, line AA in the box with line BB, li anywhere on line AA in the box represents point A on the chair. And anywhere on line BB represents point B on the chair. So no matter how I have this thing oriented, whether it's a long piece at a low angle or a short piece at a steeper angle, as long as it's connecting those two lines, uh, it really represents a line between those two points on the chair. And when you put all of those together, uh, you get a chair.